How do you know when to sell your red hot cards? I have an easy way to break this all down for you. Let's data dive. Before we get into this episode, I want to remind you that the virtual holiday card show is back this year and better than ever. Join us December 7th through the 9th on this YouTube channel as we bring you a jam-packed three days of guests, panels, and giveaways. Be sure to register by clicking the link in the description below. Hey sports card friends, my name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and welcome back to another episode of Data Dive. This week is a really important topic. Let's say you're holding a card that has just gone absolutely nuclear lately and you don't know if you should hold it or sell it. Is your card going to the moon, or is it just on one of those little Bezos space appetizers ready to come back down to earth any day now? When you find yourself in this situation, you have to ask yourself a question. Are you short-term on this card, or are you long-term? And based on the answer, I can help you. Let's start with the short-term. So you're playing the flipping game, you're in it for the short-term hustle. This one should be a no-brainer. It's really not rocket science. My theory here is when a card doubles within a few weeks, it's absolutely time to sell. Don't be greedy. It's much easier to sell to during the crescendo than after the card has peaked and is already coming down. Now let's take a look at Jordan Poole's Prism Silver Raw, for example. All right, now Jordan Poole, he came out last March in extended minutes and he started dropping 25 a game when the market went absolutely gaga for him. Then he had his minutes cut and his prices came crashing back down to earth. And we can see that on this chart right here. You know, he was kind of trending up and down a little bit like we see with a lot of these Prism Silvers in RAW. And then suddenly this card went from about 25 bucks all the way up to 75 to $88. And this is where things can get really tricky. When a card goes up three to four X that fast, it's almost always going to come back down. And why does this happen? These hype events lead to irrational buyer euphoria. Once a card hits somewhere between two to three times, you know, the price that it's recently been at, human psychology says that a significant portion of the people holding those cards are going to be willing to sell. This oversaturates the market, and with options, it creates an excess supply, which is where the prices begin to drop, and that's exactly what happened here with this pool card. Now, if you had listed this card after it had doubled, right around, you know, the $50 to $60 range, you would have been doing much better and you would have had a fantastic chance of selling this card. If you list the card for $50 when it's already coming down, it's much harder to get a buyer at that time and you can miss your window entirely. So this card hovered in the $15 to $25 range all summer long. And now we see that Jordan Poole, he's having a better performance, a more sustained performance early in the season this year. Even still, we can see that this card is kind of floating up around, you know, the $50 to $60 range. Sure, it's spiking higher than that, but again, it's sort of settled in at that point where I would have said with a card like this, with the Jordan Poole card, I would have sold. Now, before we move on to long-term strategy, there is a tip that I really wanna share with you to help you move your card when there's a lot of other cards available. Watch auctions that are ending soon and have your card ready to list on eBay in a draft mode. Now, when you see an auction end at the price that you'd be good selling yours for, immediately list it as a buy it now for sale slightly less than the auction that you just saw sell. Make sure that it's the lowest buy it now available. And I've had this trick work many times where my card sells immediately because the person who just lost out on that auction by a little bit finds an even better deal suddenly available. All right, on to long-term strategy. And this one has a little more nuance. When it comes to long-term investments, you have to ask yourself, are you more of an active or passive investor? Are you buying goats for the next 20 to 30 year game, like as if you were putting money into say a Vanguard 2050 fund? Or do you like to get your hands a little bit dirty, doing some periodic rebalancing and trying to really maximize your profits? Let's take a look at Tiger Woods rookie card and talk about both scenarios, starting with active management. So this is Tiger's PSA 10 rookie card. It's his 2001 upper deck. This is a card that is, you know, not necessarily rare, but it is iconic. This is really, you know, the, his, his most often sought after rookie card. And what I've done here is I've gone back all the way to early 2020 to kind of show you what's been happening with this card. If you're doing long-term active investing of all time grades, I would always suggest selling when a card rapidly triples or even quadruples in price in a matter of weeks. And that's exactly what we saw happen here with this Tiger Woods, where it was, you know, it was hovering right around in that 60 to $65 range. 
and then all of a sudden it spiked up to $240, $250 within a matter of a week. And what happened back here was, you know, this was during the last dance. This was during the goat craze of 2020. This is when people suddenly realized that one of the greatest golfers of all time had dirt cheap rookie cards. And this wasn't a hype event per se, as much as sort of an evolution in market consciousness around this card. It was a card that was definitively undervalued and it heated up quickly as a result. However, just like with the pool silver card, once a card like this spikes in price as fast as it did, it's almost certain to come back down quickly from its peak. In contrast, and unlike the pool card, however, it's more likely to only come down about 25 to 50% from its high rather than back down to neutral. A bull run on a blue chip card is not the same thing as a rush on a kind of hype card like the pool. Now, in an active management scenario here, you could have tried to sell your Tiger Woods card at the height for around $240. You may not have been successful, but it would have been worth trying to move it at that price point. It eventually settled down back around $180, at which point it stayed for quite a while after that. And you could have obviously bought back into that card during this time frame. Now there is a second scenario in which you might want to sell your blue chip card, you know, even if you believe in the long-term prospects of it, and that's if the card doubles from its previous high point over time. You can see that this curve here was much slower and much more organic than the initial price spike that happened with the card. But this is very common on blue chip caliber cards or stocks for this type of an event to happen where it's gonna progressively go up. And then what we see is that it hits this climax up a little bit north of $500, which is right around double this previous high of $250. And this would be a good time to look and sell. Now the question is, why? And the answer, I'm gonna get a little bit heavy here, is Elliott Waves. There's an investment analysis theory called Elliott Wave Theory, and it plays on investor sentiment and psychology. This theory suggests that an investment asset goes through cycles of ups and downs while generally trending upward before eventually going through a similar cycle, but again on the way down. Now I'll explain that a little bit more in detail here and show you what I'm talking about. So this is from Investopedia. And you can see this is, this is like the Tiger Woods card. You'll recognize some similarity here. This is when the card went up from $60 to say 250. Then it came back down by you know 70 bucks down to 180. Then we saw it go up to $500. Now what do you think happened after that? We saw on the chart that this card started to come back down. And each time the come down is not as far as it went up, but obviously that can't hold true like that forever. So what do we think happened to this Tiger Woods card? I was all the way up to December 13 here with this card. What do you think happened after that? I'm just gonna bump this out another month, say to January 2nd. And then you can see all of a sudden, this card just has this massive spike. It goes absolutely crazy. So it was hovering you know, back down in the $400 range. It starts to gain some momentum and then bang, it's up north of $1,000. This is obviously a scenario where you're looking at this card and you're saying, this can't sustain, this can't go up this fast. It's like the early euphoric spike that we saw, it's going to come back down rapidly, and that is exactly what happened. So if I shift over to this chart view, this is that same spike, I've adjusted the time frame, and you can see that very rapidly, even with this being a blue chip card, this went up so fast that it had nowhere to go but to come back down, but then it settled back in, into this price range of around $600. Now let's go back and look at the Elliott Wave Theory and I wanna talk about if you are a long-term passive investor, why you still need to pay attention to these macro market cycles so that you can be sure you're selling at the right time. So if you're not looking to actively manage your portfolio, you still need to pay attention to this, why? Let's say you're looking to cash out your cards in the next year or so, and you've hit the end of your investment window and you're ready to take the profits. You wanna time this as close as you can to the top of what they call the motive phase here, on these Elliott waves. And what that means is we're looking for this, you know, this fifth peak, which is what we saw on the Tiger Woods card. So we saw the first one, if I go back, we saw one, and then it started to come down. We saw two, and it started to come back down. And now this is three, or what they label as the fifth point in this cycle, in this motive phase, before this card is ultimately going to start coming back down. And if it's any indication, when we look at this card here, we can see this, this one anomaly here. This is really unique with this Woods card. It was truly an anomaly. That was when he had his accident and people didn't know if he was gonna be okay. They didn't know if he was actually gonna survive. There was a lot of rumors out there. So his card prices temporarily spiked 
like we saw with the unfortunate passing of Kobe Bryant. But now what we've seen is that this card continues to come back down consistently and it's all the way back down into the $300 range, which might actually be a great time to buy now. So in the case of this card, even if you had planned to hold these cards for a long time, and let's say you plan to hold it for another year before you were ready to cash this out, you want to pay attention to this and you would have wanted to sell this card back in January when it went crazy because it's very possible now based on this Elliott wave theory that this has started to slip into what could be a one to two year corrective phase cycle before we start to see upward momentum once again. Now there is a third scenario that could apply to both short-term flippers and long-term investors. We'll just quickly take a look at James Harden's 2009 Topps rookie card. Now James Harden will definitely go down as one of the 10 best players from the past decade. Even if you believe in James Harden's cards long-term, there was a hype event which occurred when everybody should have tried to sell. When Harden forced his way out of Houston, he wound up on the nets, his cards went absolutely nuclear from about $1,500 up to almost $9,000. And then look at what happened after that and up until now when the Nets didn't win the championship. This in February is right when he was traded. There were rumors, obviously he was trying to force his way out. They spiked all the way up here to almost $9,000 or you know, just, just under by a dollar. There was this little bit of a ripple effect and then just gradually they've been coming all the way back down and literally back down to where they started you know, right around $1,700 from well before that spike. So it doesn't matter if you were playing the short or the long-term game there, you definitely should have sold that card when the trade happened and taken the profits. Now, all of this leads me to one final deep philosophical question, which is something that only you can answer for yourself. Which would haunt you more? Selling now, only to see that card potentially go up more, or waiting to sell, and then seeing that card go down significantly. I can say that for me, it's usually the latter. I get more bummed when I miss a window than when I take guaranteed profits short of the peak. But what about you? Let me know down in the comments what you think. All right, as always, the charts and tools that you saw today are provided by Market Movers. We now have over 350,000 cards in our database and are launching new features monthly. For more information, visit marketmoversapp.com and see which plan might be right for you. I really hope this helps. I'd love to hear your thoughts and tips for deciding when you sell your cards down in the comments and which of these tips, if any, do you think was most valuable? Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, happy investing.